it's time to take a look at the squeeze theorem, sometimes called the sandwich theorem or in-between theorem. And it's one of the list of topics that I'm going through on this boot camp. So hopefully you're checking them all out and getting to feel more comfortable with limits. Now I will warn you the squeeze theorem is something that students feel a little queasy about it first and then maybe at the end of the year before that final exam or before the AP exam, the teacher reviews it and it starts to feel a little more comfortable. Hopefully you'll see today, we're going to go through three examples, you're going to see today that it's it's pretty standard each time. You kind of do the same thing each time and write the same thing. All right, uh, so let's get right to it. Let's first talk about simple substitution. Of course, when you can plug a number in, right, you just do it. So in this case, the sine of zero is just zero. So the limit as x approaches zero would be zero. Now that's pretty easy. Now consider this mess right here. The limit of this crazy function that's right in here. What the heck? You see how we have a divide by zero error? And what else do you notice? If you think about it, there's no good algebraic way to get rid of that x minus one. That's why we need to go outside of our comfort zone here and use the squeeze theorem instead of just those algebra tricks that I mentioned and showed you a few videos ago. All right, so let's, I, I have a couple graphs here to show you. Look at the graph of, this is the graph of x squared sine one over x minus one. Look at how crazy that thing is. It's just oscillating is what this is called. It's going back and forth all over the place, but it's actually growing left to right, right? It's going up, down, up, down, and it gets even taller and taller as it goes over. Now, um, what about just the sine part of it alone? What would that look like? Well, this is also an oscillating function. This is y equals, I put it into... Um, Desmos um, just a little bit ago, uh, sine of 1 over x minus 1. So what do you notice about this besides it's going up and down? All right, it's all mushed up in the beginning, all right, or in the middle there, where actually x equals 1 is the middle of this thing, it looks like. What else do you notice? It caps out at 1 and negative 1. Why? Why would it cap out there? Why would it, why would it only have a range? We say the range goes from negative 1 to 1. Why? Because that's the same range as sine theta, any theta. Sine theta would always range from uh, negative 1 to 1. So it makes sense that this crazy 1 over x minus 1 um, inside the sine causes the same range to happen. So we're, gonna, we're actually going to leverage the fact that sine of 1 over x minus 1 ranges from negative 1 to 1, and that's how we're going to figure out this entire limit. All right, you ready to try our first hand at the squeeze theorem? Here's how it goes, folks. It says, since, since, sine of 1 over x minus 1 is always between uh, negative 1 and 1, just like we could write it as a compound inequality, write that, like that. Then we could multiply each side, all three sides, by x squared. So we could multiply by x squared. We could multiply by x squared. Then, negative x squared is less than or equal to x squared sine of 1 over x minus 1, less than or equal to x squared. You see what this says? It says that our crazy function graph, and I'm going to go up and look at the graph again here in a second, but that graph is wedged, in a way, between two parabolas. Let's see what I mean by that. At zero, or this function in its entirety, is always, 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 here's one, one. 
actually no, here's one one. This graph is always under, the red graph is always under that blue parabola. That's our positive x squared parabola. And it's always under negative, I'm sorry, always over negative x squared. Because that's what those parabola, that's what those graphs look like, x squared and negative x squared. You see how the red graph is always wedged in between. It's sandwiched in between. The in-between theorem, the sandwich theorem, the squeeze theorem. All right. And since the limit as x goes to 0 on x squared, we'll put the negative x squared there, equals the limit as x goes to 0 on positive x squared equals what? What would the limit be on those two? Can't you just substitute 0 in? Equals 0. Then, by the sandwich theorem, Look at this. Equals zero. There's my answer. You see how this number and this are on the outside? How could something be sandwiched in between zero and zero and be anything but zero? It's sandwiched between and it has to be equal to zero. Okay, so this ended up being our limit over here. This became our limit over here. So therefore, our limit has to be the same. It has to be L in this case. All right, so this is called the sandwich theorem. And let's take a look at another one. With the sandwich theorem, you often have um, one of these oscillating functions involved with it, like a cosine or sine, because that's the part that goes from one to negative one. So let's start this again. Let's do it the same way. Let's say since negative one is less than or equal to cosine of five over x, which is less than or equal to one, right? That cosine ranges from one to negative one as well, just like sine, you knew that. Uh, we could, multiply, then x to the fourth is less than, multiply all three sides by x to the fourth. Perfectly okay thing to do in algebra. I gotta put my minus sign here. Perfectly okay thing to do in algebra is to multiply all three sides by the same number. So I'm multiplying all three sides by x to the fourth, which is a number. So I'm still got a valid inequality. And we could now add three to each side. We could add three and three minus x to the fourth is less than or equal to uh, three plus x to the fourth cosine of five over x less than or equal to three plus x to the fourth Okay, now what you do is you say, and since the limit as x goes to zero, that's what our original problem was, limit as x goes to zero on three minus x to the fourth is the same as, so that left limit is the same as the right limit, limit coming from the right here, x goes to zero on positive, or I'm sorry, three plus x to the fourth, since they both equal what? It's not zero this time. This time it's three. Then, and I did some extra writing last time. So then you should be allowed to write then by the sandwich, th 
theorem, the limit as x goes to 0 on 3 plus x to the fourth cosine 5 over x is also 3. QED, you are done. This is the example of the proof. Right? So you start out every time. You start out with a statement of truth about the oscillating part. Since cosine ranges from negative 1 to 1 always, then what you could do is figure out what to multiply all three sides by and go ahead and do that. And here I even had to add on all three sides so that I arrived at the same interior function here. Then I find the limits of the outside. So I say, and since those two limits are equal, so you say, you show how they're equal and that they're, they're equal to the same number, then you just declare by the squeeze theorem, by the sandwich theorem, the final answer is three. Okay, so that should have felt very similar to the first one I did. I've got one more that's a little bit different. Little different, check this out. Okay, so we have an exponential this time. So let me show you how this plays out. What do we start with? The same, the same. Since negative one is less than or equal to the sine of one over x, less than or equal to one. I guess I should point out before I jump into this, do you see how there's a divide by zero error here? I can't plug zero in and I can't do any algebra either to get rid of that. So, I'm kind of out of luck, except for maybe proving it in a sideways fa fashion, which is kind of what this is. It's a backdoor fashion to figuring out what this is. All right, so now what are we going to do? Then, oops, I need my pen. Then, e to the negative first would be less than e to the sine of 1 over x which is less than e to the first. You see what I did? I added a base e to all three sides, and that doesn't mess up the inequality, folks. That is still a true inequality, right? If I have um, two is less than or equal to three, which is less than or equal to four, and then I put a five on all of these, you see how 25 is less than 125, which is less than 625. So you're allowed to add the same base to all sides, and you still have a valid inequality. All right, what are we missing? We're still missing the x squared, so we got to get there. So what we do is we multiply all three sides by x squared, and x squared e to the negative first is less than e I'm sorry, x squared e to the sine of 1 over x, which is less than or equal to x squared e to the first. And since, sorry for my bad handwriting, but I'm trying to move this along quickly so that you can move on to other topics. I bet you're feeling pretty good about this. Since the limit as x goes to 0 on x squared e, e to the negative first is the same as the limit as x goes to zero on x squared e to the first, and they both equal what? When you plug zero in, zero squared is zero. Zero times e to the whatever is still zero. Then by the sandwich theorem, the limit as x goes to zero on x squared e to the sine of 1 over x is also equal to 0. QED, we're done. We've proven what we wanted to prove, what we set out to prove. All right, well, I really hope that this video was helpful for you and that you'll check out the other videos I put together about limits. I'm enjoying putting these videos together because I often have, uh, I tutor students a lot and they're always asking me about limits, especially at the end of the year as we get close to that final exam. All right, well, until next time, good luck.